Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Saving Salvage. Wow, what a what a ridiculously busy month it's been. Um, I'm sorry there's been no uploads. It's just been an absolutely hectic month. Any spare time I did have to work on the car, um, there's something went wrong with it. I.e. I was doing the near side suspension um, or trying to do it and there's just bulk seized, have to cut things out. So jobs that normally take five to ten minutes ended up taking two to three hours and that happened multiple times. So the times I allocated to do the car over the, over the last month, um, I've just come problem after problem and and then various events and work got in the way and so unfortunately I've been, not been able to work on the car for ages. Um, right, as I'm recording this intro, I haven't actually done any of, the, any of the work yet. I have finished the near side front wish, not wishbone, um, strut leg. Um, I've done that now because that's what I was having problems with uh, and I've taken more than enough footage to last a lifetime for it uh, and didn't really do much. So I've just finished it off um, I'll show you that now and then we can crack on with the rest of the stuff. I just wanted to get it done because it was, if I'm honest it was doing my head in. So it's done now um, uh, and then we can crack on with the rest of the stuff. So as always guys, if you do enjoy these videos, uh, please give it a like and please if you haven't already do subscribe and also head over to my um, Instagram channel, page, whatever you want to call it. Uh, check out pictures I post up that aren't on the YouTube. So right, I'll show you the near side front. Um, what I've done already and then we can crack on with the rest of it. Right, as you can see, we have uh, my Rad Pack. Apologies, I forgot to uh, video unwrapping it and fitting it. I just got too excited. As you can see, I've actually, actually already unboxed it and um, kind of just fitted it onto the front end. I um, got a bit too eager and forgot to video it, basically. But all I've, all I've really done is just, I haven't bolted anything down. I've just sit, sat it in position and I've connected the coolant pipes and I connected the what they called gearbox oil pipes um, and the uh, supercharger cooler pipe as well so yeah it's just it's just sat in position at the minute it's not bolted on or anything um, I did get a radiator uh, not radiator I did get a condenser with it here look Unfortunately, the guy that I bought it off didn't package it very well at all, and so it snapped off the. You can see here, look, snapped off. One sec, snapped off the pressure sensor. So that's no good. That completely rendered that useless. And to be fair, it's a bit mullered anyway. So um, the seller and I come to an agreement. He knocked off basically the price of a new condenser. Um, not a genuine one, unfortunately, but it's it's only a condenser. It's it's good enough, isn't it? So we'll get that on. Hopefully, we can start her up and see what she's like. See if it runs. There we have it, she starts, beautiful. Uh, sounds fine to be fair, engine sounds good. Um, lit, sounded a little bit throaty, but that might be to do with the fact that obviously the airbox cover's exposed and possibly um, that exhaust clamp in the middle was obviously defective, so it might have been leaking a bit of uh, gases out of there, so hopefully Hopefully that won't be too bad and it'll sound fine. I didn't want to run it for too long because obviously I don't have any coolant in it and um, none of the auxiliary belts are on or anything and obviously I don't have a crank pulley on either. So at least it runs. Obviously that's the main thing. So now I know it runs. Again with the same with the RS3, we can start putting things back together. Um, I can't bolt this front end on just yet because I need, I've got my crank pulley, but I just don't have my crank pulley bolts. So 
so we can't put that end front end on properly just yet um well, as i said it was just put there just to purely test to see if the engine works so for now we'll leave that and we'll get going with this steering arm so we can get the car at least movable Yeah, so this is the whole reason we've had to remove the whole strut. Basically, this bolt here, which goes through and comes out here, holds in these two ball joints. Like, sits in a rib. Uh, yeah, so basically that just locates these two ball joints in position. So you need to remove the bolt to be able to get the ball joints out. But as you can see, you can probably tell that the bolt is actually bent. And that is because it is absolutely seized in there solid and I just couldn't get any leverage at all um, in there to, to try and hammer it out so and I didn't obviously want to damage the wing so we've gone for a full removal and now hopefully I've got the access now to hit that out. Right, this bolt would absolutely not budge whatsoever. In fact, you might be able to see where I was hitting it with a hammer. It's actually compressed the threads on the actual bolt. Just did not move whatsoever. So I've had no choice but to cut it out, which I've managed to do on one of them. I just thought I'd stop quickly just to show you what I've had to do. You can see here, look, I've had to cut Basically, as you can see here, look, you can see here the rib and the bolt goes through that and just sits in there and that's what stops the ball joint from coming out. So I've had to basically cut into it to expose the bolt so I could cut the bolt out, which is what I've done. And then once the bolt was cut out, I could then pop the ball joint out with the chisel. I have slightly oh, I have slightly cut into it there, look, but that doesn't make any difference at all. So it's only a little bit, so that's fine. But obviously it was just I was just trying to conscious especially to avoid damaging the boot and damaging the ball joint. So that one's done fine. So now we need to move on to the next one, which will be a lot more difficult because it's gonna be a lot harder to cut out. Right, so here's the new side front strut, um, hub bearing, whatever you want to call it, hub unit. This is what I've been struggling with. I've already showed you this um, time lapse of it, uh, but this is what I've been struggling with. Word of warning, if you're going to replace this hub unit again, just buy a second hand unit that comes complete, i.e. with everything, even the strut. It's just what an absolute ball like this has been. Um, removing this was okay. But I had to press the wheel bearing out, which was an absolute ball ache. The ABS sensor was completely seized in, so I had to order a new one of those. Um, these bolts up here, all completely seized in. As you can see, I've pinched the seal there, so I'm going to need a whole new arm. But I've just put it in place for the moment, because I can replace that at a later date. But yep, I had to cut this side out and that side out. Um, what else have we got? Just everything really, all the ball joints, absolute pain in the ass. So it's literally taken about 13, 14 hours just to do all this because everything was just completely seized. So if anyone's looking to do this, I advise just buy a complete secondhand strut unit. So much easier and cheaper.
haven't then bolted it up because we have to fit a new crank pulley and the damaged idle idler pulley that was in there, which we do have. There we go, We've got a genuine crankshaft pulley and eight genuine bolts. So we can whack that on, that's the old one, look. I can show you here why it was damaged or how, I don't know, but you can see where it's damaged there. Look. So we have a new one of those, there she be. So we'll stick that on in a minute and then we'll get this crankshaft pulley on. Uh, once that's on, we'll put the belts on. I should have two new belts, one and the other one somewhere else. We'll get those on and hopefully then we can bolt the front end up. And we've got my crash bar there. Hopefully that's the right one, as you can see. Ordered it weeks ago. Haven't bothered undoing it to see if it's the right one or not. But we'll find that out in the fullness of time. Right, so we'll crack on and get this front end put together. About to install the crankshaft pulley, and you do have to be careful when this goes on, as it can only go in one way. Um, let me just grab my torch. You can see the holes there, you see the two dots either side of that hole. That is because if you look carefully, that hole is pushed slightly further back than all the others. If you can see it there, look, it's only about a millimeter, maybe two at best but it's slightly, the hole's slightly closer to the outer edge than the inner circle. And that will be the same on the crankshaft. So because it's such a small difference, it's really hard to uh, know which hole on here is the, um, the correct hole to line up with that. I mean, you can put it in the service position, um, TDC, um, but I'm just gonna spend time trying to work out which one of those holes is correct but it all lines up and only going one way, so that's fine. As you can see there, look, all the holes line up perfectly. So which means my locating decision choice was absolutely spot on. So that's cool. Right, we've got both belts on, crank pulleys on, um, new idler pulleys on there. Put that pulley back on, got both belts back on. Turned the engine, engine over one turn, so I know all the auxiliary things are at least not seized, so that's all good. So now we've got to do is give it a start and hopefully everything should work as intended. Soon find out. Right, we'll have to stop the video there, guys. Um, I've got basically I've got too much footage for just the one video, so um, we're going to do it in two parts. The first part, obviously, you've just watched, and the second part I will release over the weekend. Um, I'll probably do it Sunday morning, so uh, there's enough footage for two videos, basically. So, um, as you've seen, that's what we've done so far. We've done the near side front wheel, got that operational, and um, we've put the rad pack on, we've put the crank pulley on, we've put the alternator belts on, we've got it running, got it running properly. Um, and then obviously part two will then be fitting the rad pack properly, uh, putting all the front end back together, test fitting the bumper, hopefully fitting the wing and getting the wheels on, getting it on the ground, driving it out, and hopefully we'll get some proper photos of it and maybe give it a clean. So that's it for this part. I will see you tomorrow morning for the second part of part three, if that makes sense. Cheers guys.